Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to cover off how to set up some more advanced features in Home Assistant and today we're going to look at the MQTT broker which is designed for Internet of Things normally around command sets for devices so whether they be binary sensors, plug switches, that kind of thing and then how to integrate that with Zigbee. Now if you're not familiar with Zigbee, Zigbee is basically a communication platform that uses Wi-Fi for most of your home smart devices. So a lot of the things that you'll see is you'll hear if you go on forums, people are generally looking for Zigbee devices because it takes away potentially that need for the device to have any communication with the cloud. And this is why we're going to look at setting up Zigbee to MQTT because what it means is for the likes of say Philips Hue, I can bring everything internal and not rely on any kind of cloud communication, which if you think about it, your home automation setup, you don't necessarily need it or want it to talk out to the cloud because there may be challenges if your internet goes down that you can't turn off your lights or on your lights, for example. So Philips Hue uses Zigbee. However, what I'm looking at doing this for is mainly for my Sonoff devices. Now, to do this, I've used a Sonoff USB stick. I believe the particular one I've got is a P or an E. The setup is slightly different depending on each one. We'll cover that off in the video. However, you do need to flash that device to get it to work to a degree to get it to work with more Zigbee devices. There's usually a cap on around 50 devices. If you want to breach that gap, there is some firmware that needs to be applied. I will do a video in the near future to cover that off. So in the meantime, let's go into how to set up MQTT Broker and Zigbee to MQTT. These are too long, aren't they really? Well, let's go. So I think every time I say MQTT, I need a pound. We'll go with that message, will we? It's, it's a nightmare. Now, if you've done it like I have in my previous video, you do need to pass through the USB device. Now, don't just pass it through as vendor. You can, and it does tend to work on some devices. However, it's better to pass through the whole port. Now, you will need to make sure you've got IO MMU set up. Again, I'll do a separate video on that. But once that's done, we can go into Home Assistant, into add-ons, find the Mosquito Broker, which is the longer word for MQTT, and just get that installed. Now, it's good to turn Watchdog on and I turn Auto Update on. You don't necessarily have to, but just get it started anyway. Um, what Watchdog does is basically, if it, if it fails for any reason, it starts it back up. So we now need to just probably do a refresh a lot of most things with Home Assistant, sometimes if you don't refresh the browser, you won't see what you've added. And you can now see MQTT is on there. <laughs> okay, just simple steps next is click configure on that annoying acronym and then finish and you'll be good. So that's that part done. Really, really simple. What we're now going to look at is Zigbee to MQTT. So this is basically the, the option that will enable us to use Zigbee devices, talk through that Sonoff device, and work with our MQTT broker. So you'll need to go to GitHub. The link I'll stick in the description of this video. Copy it in there because we need to add that repository to Home Assistant to make it work. So if you go into add-ons, add in the repository, and you'll see it there. Just click close. And again, guess what? Let's do a refresh. Sometimes it just appears, but I just find refreshing is so much simpler. If you do have problems, you might need to flush your DNS cache, but you can now see Zigbee to MQTT is there. Just click install. Now, there is a config required for this. I will, again, stick something in the description, or maybe if I get round to it, stick it on my website in a blog which i think will probably be the long-term option because some of the commands are a little bit difficult you can find them though if you go on to that zigbee site in the github they are listed there as well now what i need to do is create an mqtt user you can call it whatever you like but i tend to call it that just because i can't say mqtt a lot or i tend to say a lot but get my q's and t's mixed up we then want to set a complicated password. Now, it obviously is going to be addressed internally, 
and that's all I want it to do. So you should really click that. I didn't at this point. Oh, yes, I did. So click that to make sure it only logs in locally. Obviously, do make it strong and secure. It does go in clear text. Now, there is a way to protect it with a secret. You can do that. So you can set up some password files on um, Home Assistant. I'll do that in another, another video. But what I wanted to do today is just show it basically. So what we're next going to do is to get the device ID of that USB stick. So going into all hardware, I should be able to find by typing in Sonoff my device and you can see there it is that usb device listed at the bottom so if we click on that what i'm after is the particular device id which i'll grab now because we need that for something and this is documented on zigbee's website they are really good actually at um kind of coming through that so when i stick the link in for the repository you should be able to find a lot of that information here but it's, it is good to obviously go through and see how it's done. I've set Zigbee to MQTT up many a times and had many different problems. And usually it is around the passwords or that particular setting. Um, so it's it's worth just double checking what you're doing. It, you know, I tend to get a little bit ahead of myself and just crack on half the time. So, But anyway, what we're going to do now is go into Zigbee to MQTT and do a bit of a setup. So... Some of it will already be pre-populated, so we can see in there there is some information. We don't need to address any of that. So what we're going to do is add the following lines to the MQTT part, which is usually around the server address, which is usually that. If you find that doesn't work, you can use your IP address of Home Assistant. Again, I've had different experiences where one has worked. Usually that's around DNS challenges, but one of those things to do and then user is whatever you set it up as so for mine it will be mqtt hyphen user similarly with password it will be in clear text hence why i blurred it that password that i've used so you won't be able to see it but it is there now i did change it after this video anyway and did add it in the secrets file just because necessarily if somebody did go on my home assistant i don't necessarily want people having that password simply so the next lines come again from that zigbee website and they are made up of part of that information that we captured from that hardware device that usb device when we captured that information about the device id that's what's in here now the reason i pass through the whole usb device is it tends to work better that way the only thing that you need to think about is if you do move the device into a different usb port you will need to change this. So, you know, I don't plan to use mine. I've got mine running on an extension cable as well, but basically it's the device ID there. And this next part is optional. So this adapter part depends if you've got an E or a P. Now, it doesn't hurt to put it in. I'm going to put it in and it will probably fail and I'll show you what happens when it fails. But if you put... EZSP in there it can likely just hang when you try to start the broker up so we'll look at that we'll add show in sidebar because it's worth doing not done auto update yet and we click start and we go into log now it doesn't auto refresh so what it's worth doing is give it a couple of seconds hit the refresh button and mine's just sat there now it doesn't just sit there unless you've got a really slow home assistant instance it won't just sit there so I can tell you what's wrong with mine Mine is around that element that we had. So I've just gone in and proved again. It's not doing anything. So mine is basically to do with the fact of that adapter control. So I'm going to remove that adapter control and that will solve it. Because you can see at the moment, clicking on Zigbee to MQTT, nothing is loading, nothing is doing anything. So if you get that problem, just go into configuration. I'll just prove it doesn't work again. And now it does. So all I did is went in, you wouldn't have seen that bit, but I went in and removed that device. And now if we go into Zigbee 2 MQTT, you can see two devices I've added already, which are both Sonoff devices. Now at the very top, 
So that one is just a temperature sensor, temperature and humidity sensor. But you'll see the option to permit join all. And you can see the ones that have got that. Now you can rename them. So the blue line will give you the option to rename them. So when you set these up one by one, you can rename them to more interesting and useful names. I've certainly done that. The entity IDs, you don't necessarily want to mess with. You leave them as they are. But if you give them better friendly names, you'll be able to locate them very, very simply. So to add a new device, depends on the device you've got, but each one will have a pairing mode. Now on the Sonoff devices that I use, one of the key ones they use is a round, just holding down that button on the bottom. All I'd need to do is permit join all up there. That allows it to be searched. You will see my device any second now. Come online and be able to be added. And there we go. So that one there, I know is a particular temperature sensor. It will come up unsupported for a split second, not to worry about it too much. You can click on there and you can see that one is actually a Toyo device. So this was me adding my Sonoff switch itself. And there we go. And what I can do is I can give it a home assistant name. So that one is Kitchen uh, Wireless Switch, I believe. So we'll add that one in and then click submit however like i said if you actually go to the front page there is a blue button at the bottom under about that you can change the name to a lot better and that one have added that in and you can probably see it was right at the bottom there or one of the temperature sensors there are in there with very very wrong names so it's best to go back in and rename them to make them a lot easier but that's it there we go how to set it up so hopefully you found that video useful. Please, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, hit the like and subscribe. That helps me help you. And, you know, I want to kind of take this whole YouTube journey a little bit further in the not too distant future. So, you know, a growing channel would be really good to get your support. However, what we've covered off today is the Zigbee 2 MQTT setup for Home Assistant, and that kind of helps you build out other devices. I use it a lot for my Sonoff devices, which are flashed with either ESP Home or Tasmota. I will do a video on both of those in the coming weeks because I've already flashed the devices. Just need to stick it all together. So, yeah, I'll see you next time, but maybe go and watch some of these as well. Cheers.